I am finally starting to get back into a normal routine. My back has been feeling so much better and every day I try to do a little bit more. After I'm done with chores this morning, I will be heading into town. I haven't been shopping for my real job in a few weeks, so it's about time I get back out there. There are still a bunch of people that think I am independently wealthy or that I have some kind of trust fund or something, but I assure you I work very hard to be able to afford all of these horses. I thought it would be fun today to keep track of everything that I buy and how much I plan to sell it for. But first, I do have to feed all of the horses and clean out their stalls. It looks like Tiny has already been on the rounds this morning. Her belly is so full of mice, I'm guessing. We have been getting quite a bit of snow, but during the day, it still is getting above freezing, so the mice are out and about. This is the perfect Montana winter weather for me. It has only been getting a few degrees below freezing at night, so Nigel has been staying outside. He was actually getting way too hot with his blanket on, so he has been just hanging out with his regular winter hair coat. I got to the barn a little bit late today. It was around 8 a.m., so by the time I was done, it was getting to be around 10.30, 11 o'clock. Since it has been so nice out, these horses have been drinking a ton of water. This old guy has been doing really, really well this winter. He is getting to be pretty old, so I worry about him. He has been wasting a lot of hay, and I think it might be time to switch him over to an all pelleted or mashed diet. Right now, he gets about half of his food in a kind of slop, and then he does get some regular hay. His mash is a little bit expensive, but if he keeps wasting hay, then it might be worth it to switch him over completely. The very last thing I have to do this morning before I head out is turn off the water tank for the gelding's pasture. I have noticed that they have been galloping around their turnout and getting some of their energy out with the nice weather. These boys have already been fed, but I think they're confused. Oh. I think they think I have grain in this big orange bucket for them. But they already got their grain this morning, so no second breakfasts. I am really excited my back is starting to feel better because I need to get Stewie started under saddle pretty soon here. Around this time of year, I'm about over winter and I'm ready to get back to riding. One of the reasons I think I'm having some trouble with my back is I don't ride hardly at all in the winter time. It just takes me an extra long time to do chores and I don't have an indoor so it would take the horses a really long time to cool down. And depending on the day, I do spend several hours doing things for my regular job, which is how I pay for these guys. The horses are actually looking a little bit plump right now. This light fluffy snow that we're getting is perfect for riding on. If we get two or three more inches, I'll be fine riding in the arena, even if it's pretty cold out. Skeletor has really been milking his injury. Every morning when I leave, he just looks at me with his sad puppy face. And while I would love to spend all day at the barn with him, I do need to go to work in order to pay for these guys. I started thrifting as a quote unquote real job about five years ago. I was getting really burnt out working as a veterinary technician and this allows me to spend much more time with the horses. There is a definite rush when I go to the thrift store. I have no idea what I'm going to find. I very rarely leave empty handed. My potential profit for the day is starting off at zero. As soon as I get into the store, I am checking the athletic wear. They must have just restocked because the racks are really full today. There are a lot of brands that aren't worth reselling, but right off the bat, I noticed that these leggings felt really nice and it only took me a few seconds to realize they were Lululemon. These are the clear, the quart tight. They retail for $119 and they will sell for around $40 for me. So that's the first thing I'm gonna add to the tally for the day. As I'm looking through the athletic wear, I noticed these um, vegan suede tights from Free People. 
They retail for $78 and I think I'll probably be able to sell them for around $25. I have been doing this long enough that there's a lot of stuff I don't even have to look up. But when I'm not sure about how something will sell, I just look it up online. This was something that I wasn't sure of. I've sold these t-shirts before and they've done pretty well, but this was a really heavy shirt jacket. These sell for $115 on their website. And judging by the comps on eBay, I should be able to sell this for $60. So I'm gonna add that to the tally for the day. Since I've been thrifting for so long, I can tell with my hands when a piece of fabric is high quality, which really helps when you're going through the suits and things. I found this really nice wool blazer. This collaboration with Banana Republic originally sold for $300 and I should be able to sell it for around 100. When I started a few years ago, the prices were a little bit lower. Now they've started to slightly creep up. So I'm definitely more concerned about what I pick. This is a Christian Dior jacket. It is pretty dated and it does have some staining on the underarms. I kind of really wanted to buy it just because, but then I noticed that the price tag was missing and my Goodwill will not sell something with the tag missing. It was kind of a bummer because I did find the matching pants. Maybe I'll see it back on the rack in a couple days with a new price tag and I can buy it then. There was another handmade wool coat that I was looking at and it actually ended up being a dressage coat, which I thought was pretty cool. I had never heard of the brand before, but when I looked it up, it looked like they were selling for around $100. I saw another really nicely made pinstripe suit jacket and it ended up being YSL. Judging by the style, it was from the 80s or 90s. It should sell for around $60 for me, so that was a pretty good pickup as well. I have been trying to get a little bit more picky about what I buy and I found these really nice rag and bone jeans in the men's department. They looked like they had hardly been worn. I was just checking to see if they were selvedge denim. If they were, I probably would have picked them up, but the comps were too low for me to get. Same with these super cute Converse Chuck Taylors. I have gotten so much better at self-control over the years. The thrift store that I shop at is always busting at the seams with clothes. I was actually having a hard time getting enough room to see everything clearly as I'm going through. They also just raised the price of the men's long sleeve shirt so they have to be pretty fancy for me to want to take a chance on them. I love these vintage L.L. Bean shirts. I wear them all the time. This one was made in USA and I was going to pick it up but the comps were around $20 and it did have some damage to the collar. I took a quick peek at the belt and I did end up picking one up that I'll show you guys at the end. I took a little bit of time perusing some of the hard goods sportswear. I had no idea what this was but the bag was really well made and then I looked it up and it's a neck pillow. And there were actually two in the bag so I should be able to sell this for $70. I have a feeling that this store is getting a ton of donations because it's after the holidays. Lots of people are cleaning out their closets and I think the recent good weather had something to do with it too. There are a few main things I look for when I'm searching through the children's clothes. I do tend to find a lot of really small women's shorts and leggings in the children's department. I've seen lots of Lululemon in here so I'm just checking really quick. There are a few brands of vintage children's clothing that can sell for lots and lots of money on eBay. The really cutesy little prairie cottagecore dresses are selling really well right now. I almost had a little attack when I saw these vest backs. I had some of these when I was little and now they can sell for several hundred dollars depending on the print. These are not vintage, so they'll only sell for about $20. Same thing with these super cute little pink stripe ones. They are not worth me picking up, but I always keep my eyeballs peeled for the vintage ones. I saw these super cute little Converse sparkly shoes. They retail for around $50, but resale is only around $15, so I won't be getting those. 
I don't find a lot of Patagonia when I'm thrifting. I think this store pulls it, but for some reason, the children's Patagonia, they do put out. So I look for that all the time. The down vests and jackets, they sell for around $50 to $75 for me. So that's definitely worth checking everything out. One of the things I love about thrifting is you can find really unique things. This was a pair of handmade shearling booties and if I had any little human to put these on, I definitely would have picked them up. I'm going to go super quick through these little girls clothes. I found this super cute little Wrangler shirt. It was $2.99 but even at that price, the resale is not enough for me to pick it up. This was kind of crazy. I picked up these spatulas to stir horse food and then I found a Cutco spatula inside. Most Cutco things, even the knives are pretty expensive, so that will be an easy $45. I don't spend too much time on hard goods. There are a few thrifters that come to this store a couple times a day actually, and they pick out a lot of the really high-end things. They were putting out a cart of new things, so I did take a little bit time to see what was new. This Lucite napkin holder caught my eye. The brand is Color Flow and it's from the 70s. I probably shouldn't have picked it up, but it was just too cool to leave behind. I also picked up this stoneware plate set. They are stamped, so I'll have to do some more research when I get home, but I think I can sell them for 20 bucks a piece. I picked up this hydro flask for my coffee. I usually don't buy a lot of mugs because they're harder for me to store and ship. There was literally no space on here, so it was jam-packed today. I saw this cute mug. It was from Target. I also found some Ray Dunn. This used to sell well, but these are selling for around 10 bucks, so not worth me getting. I did find a few stoneware mugs, but these looked like they were made by someone that was just starting out, so they're probably not worth picking up. I found another Ray Dawn mug. I honestly don't know a ton about dishware and glassware, but I've got a tiny computer in my pocket so I can always look something up if I don't know what it is. I did end up finding this super cute yellow depression glass teacup. I actually think it was a reproduction and it did have a chip in it. These don't sell for very much unless you have the whole set anyway, so I didn't get it. Usually when I go thrifting, I do check the entire store. I like to go back and forth between the hard goods and the clothing. I always check the pet section for things that I might be able to use for my cats and Huckleberry. I got these little rubber boots for him today. I was going to pick up this little cat tunnel for the cats in my house because they love these things but I'm really trying hard to declutter and get rid of things that I don't need, so I decided not to get it. I also decided to put back this little cat purse because it's a little bit ridiculous. I saw this kind of cool vintage silhouette picture. I thought they'd sell for more, but they're selling for around $15 online, so I decided not to get it. After spending some time in the hard goods, I went over to the women's clothes and I found this right off the bat. This brand has very well tailored clothes that cost a couple hundred dollars new. Conservatively, I should be able to sell this for $50. It is turning into a pretty good thrift day with my potential profit over $500 already. I saw this super cute bandage dress. It looked like it had a tag for being on consignment at another store. I kind of wanted to get this for myself, but it was a few sizes too small. In the end, I decided that I did want to pick it up. These are coming back in style and this one should sell for around $50. Even though it is winter in Montana, it is summer somewhere else, so I still buy dresses even in the dead of winter. This one was made of a really heavy knit fabric. It was Calvin Klein and brand new with tags. I would not have bought this unless it had the tags on it. I should be able to get around $40 for it. It is a pretty good color. I did see a few really nice dresses, but the price point was just not high enough for me to pick up. 
I almost bought this one for me because I really liked it. It was a little bit too small as well. It would have been the perfect St. Patty's Day dress. This is a brand that sells at Anthropology and is very expensive. This dress was 100% silk. After looking up comps, they are not selling for very much money, so I passed on it. I know a lot of people don't check the intimate section, but these tank tops sell really, really well. This one should sell for $60. I zipped through the sports bras and ended up finding this Patagonia one. It is nearly new and I should get $25 for it. The store got pretty busy so I put away my phone while I went through the rest of the racks. After I was done, I went through all the clothes I picked up. This was one of those ruby ribbon tank tops that had some damage so I put it back. There is nothing more aggravating than getting home and finding out that something you bought is damaged. I made sure to give this one an extra close once over just to make sure it was in perfect condition. I was curious as to what they were trying to get for this dress at the consignment store and that's when I found that this was new with the retail tags. I should be able to get probably $100 for this dress now that it has the tags. I have sold a ton of pants by this brand but never a like tunic jacket like this so I'll be interested to see how it sells. I had picked up this really nice wool coat from Land's End but the comps were horrible even though it was new with tags so I put it back. I also ended up finding these sandals that retail for around $300 and resell for around $120. These ended up having some beads missing so I put them back. This is the belt that I picked up. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to sell it for but conservatively I'm going to put $30. And then this dressage coat is probably gonna take a long time to sell, so I decided to put it back, so I subtracted that from our total. I went to go put back the dog boots and the shoes, and I found some new stuff that they put out. This was just American Eagle. And then I caught this dog rehab pad out the corner of my eye. This looks very similar to the Surefoot pads that they make for horses. This has been something that's been on my list for a very long time. The ones for horses are several hundred dollars. This one costs $50 retail. I probably shouldn't have bought it, but I just couldn't leave it behind. I put these little rubber boots back and then I saw they were rolling out a new rack of men's clothes and I ended up finding this really nice alpaca hoodie. I had never heard of this brand, but they are reselling for around $90, which brought our total for the day to $1,000 in potential profits. I did go ahead and put these shoes back even though I kind of wanted to keep them for myself. Depending on what time I come, it can be hard for me to leave the store if they are restocking everything and there might be treasures to be found, but I wanted to make sure I got back to the horses in time to do a few things with Skeletor this evening. This is just an estimate of the potential profit that I might have from today's haul. It is actually a little bit light for me. I usually get about twice as much. I ended up paying $90 for everything after my 20% off coupon, which leaves $910 for potential profit when I go to sell it. To get a more realistic view of what I actually might profit from these items, I am going to take off 25%. That will account for any sales that I run or when I reduce the price and also my eBay fees. After that calculation, I am left with $682.50. And just to give you guys a little bit of an overview of the time breakdown for that, I will usually spend two hours shopping. I'll then spend an hour taking photos and then another hour listing everything. I'm also going to factor in an hour every day to package, ship, and take my items to the post office. So when you take our haul for the day and divide it by five hours of work, you end up getting $136 an hour, 
which seems like a really good use of my time until you factor in that I have to pay taxes, I need to pay for gas, I need to pay for supplies to ship everything and returns. I don't go shopping every day, but that is just a little bit of a glimpse into how I make money for these horses. When I was done at the thrift store, I did go pick up some shavings for the horses before I headed back to the barn for the evening. Skeletor was waiting for me in the same spot that I left him and it really bums me out. He is just such a people friendly horse. I am going to get him out today and do a few things with him. I do want to see if he's growing at all. I haven't measured him in a few months and last time I did he was 15 too. And for a minute I thought that he was shrinking until he adjusted himself and stood up straight and he has not grown one bit. I've really been trying to give him supervised time for exercise only because he does too many crazy things when he's turned out on his own. And this evening he was doing crazy things while I was trying to lunge him. I have tweaked his diet to include a few things that have been making him feel really good. He did not appear to be lame on the leg that we were worried about initially. Today he was actually sore on the opposite leg. I do have a sneaking suspicion that the problem he's having with his lameness is up in his back or SI area because he is having some shifting leg lameness between both hind legs. His back was really sore before I lunged him and he did loosen up quite a bit. After observing him pretty closely for the last couple weeks, I'm starting to feel a little bit more hopeful about him. I do have a different vet that is a chiropractor that will come out and work on him after I get some shoes put on him. Sometimes it can be hard deciding what's best for these horses, especially when you don't exactly know what's going on. But for Skeletor, I think it's very important that he gets to be out and interact with the other horses. As the sun set, I unloaded all of the shavings that I bought today. There was a crazy beautiful sunset that was happening. The mountains never show up as good on camera as they look in real life, but I decided to zip on out so you guys could get a peek of them. Over this next year, I hope to maybe start making more content for YouTube and spending less time out thrifting even though I love it so much. There were also a lot of you guys asking about my eBay store and I decided I will link it in the description along with a special coupon code that you guys can use to get an extra 20% off. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.